Hello everyone! This is a quick video to illustrate the interactions between XAML and DirectX 11. And to do so, I'm going to show you how the app that you see on your screen works. The reason why I want to explain all these concepts using video material is because I never found any documentation that could give me a clear idea about what involves mixing these two technologies together. I mean, sure, there are manuals, brochures, and online articles. However, they fail to give what we call the big picture. By describing what is going on, I'm hoping I could give a clear idea of the development strategy to follow. The sample application that we are going to use is a quick custom tool that I built to work with 3D models and to fine-tune animations. It doesn't fully work but it is functional enough to identify its individual elements. So let me describe you the different components of this tool. In short, this application is pretty much a page, having XAML elements in the front with an implementation of DirectX as the animated picture on the background. Technically speaking, this is what they call swap channel. To start, we can see that the background handled by DirectX, has a few two-dimensional graphics. However, we can spot the standard app bar that comes with a typical XAML application. Let's start the editing process by launching the file open dialog handled by XAML, and then let's select the model file to work with. Note that the file format of the 3D model is an X file. The on-click event sends a message to the DirectX side of the application, which in turn loads the model file and draws it on the left side of the screen. Likewise, I can load the animation file to work with. Continuing with the DirectX side, we have some controls that we can work with. These controls are drawn and handled directly by the DirectX side. Samuel is not involved at all. The right side of the screen shows orange squares representing the model's vertices. You can see that I'm emulating the on mouse over event in the DirectX side of the application. It's not just about highlighting the selected square, but also about displaying the vertex information associated to the selected square. When I click on one of these orange boxes, a message is sent to the XAML page with information associated with the selected vertex. A XAML grid gets visible, allowing me to edit the coordinates of the referred vertex. When I click Set, a message is sent to the DirectX side with the specified changes. I added a grid where we can do some other tasks like zooming. All these features work by sending messages to the DirectX side. At the end, uh, we can bake and save our model in an X file. I'm not going to do that just yet because it doesn't fully work with skinnet models. However, what I can do is to run the animation that we just loaded, which is the useful part of this tool. On the right side, this tool logs the coordinates of the character's ankles on keyframes. I can then use this information to specify with accuracy the number of units the character should move forward to avoid foot slippage. Of course, if you notice, the information is mirrored. This is because there's a compatibility break between Google XNA and DirectX that, couldn't, that I couldn't solve. But no matter, for we can always work with mirrored animations. As you can see on the list, I solved the slippage on the X coordinate, but I still have some problems with the Z coordinate. Since these animations are for a side-scrolling brawler, that is something that we can ignore for now. In fact, it is on my best interest that the Z-coordinate is kept constant. Also, Jim, a friend and college, remarked that this kind of strikes is done by pivoting on the ball of the foot, and he is very right about it. Selecting the ankle as a reference for foot slippage was not the best option for this kind of strikes. However, the ankle as a reference will work for all other type of animations. 